The closed museum we will visit today is the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., the second most visited in the Western Hemisphere behind the Metropolitan Museum in New York. The Air and Space Museum main building opened in 1976. The shiny sculpture up front is entitled Ad Astra, which is Latin for To the Stars. Our exhibit we will look at today is the Friendship 7 capsule, the capsule that carried astronaut John Glenn 162 miles up into space and around the Earth orbiting three times during his four-hour and 56-minute flight. His February 20, 1962 flight was the first time an American orbited the Earth in space. This is the capsule as it is located in the museum, right near the entrance as you come off the National Mall. The space capsule in the middle was from the later Project Gemini. That project was named for the Twins of the Zodiac, as the tiny capsule carried two astronauts, whereas our even smaller Friendship 7 carried one. Gemini 4's flight was part of the preparation for the moon landing and featured America's first spacewalk. To the left here is a lunar module, a lander spacecraft. This one was used for testing during the later missions to the moon. It is similar to the one that landed the first men on the moon, but that original lunar module is not available as an exhibit. That one was jettisoned during the 1969 mission and probably crashed into the moon. The Project Mercury was named for the Roman messenger god known for his speed, and the ship at orbit traveled 17,000 miles per hour. The number seven in Friendship 7 was a reference to the seven trained astronauts in the program, called the Mercury 7. John Glenn is located here. Here are the wives of the seven astronauts. I assume they match up one cover to the next and that this is John Glenn's wife right here. Here they are, the astronauts all suited up and to the right, as depicted in the 1983 film, John Glenn was played by Ed Harris. Our capsule, upon launch, was placed atop a large 94-foot-high Atlas rocket to boost the capsule into space. This red structure on the top is an emergency escape tower. Despite its name, that tower was not for an astronaut to escape into, it was an additional rocket in case there was an emergency or abortive takeoff. The extra rocket would pull the capsule away from the main rocket and allow the astronaut, if all went well, to parachute back to Earth. Once the launch was successful, the emergency escape tower was jettisoned and it would look like this little cap up top would also fall away this is an even better view of a model of the capsule, an emergency escape tower. This is Glenn as he's getting into the capsule in 1962 with the freshly painted lettering. You can see what the heat of space and maybe a little bit of time can do. The moment of highest drama in the flight was when the capsule approached re-entry. A sensor suggested that the heat shield, seen here, and which would take the brunt of the re-entry, was coming loose. A retro pack, seen here in this model, used to maneuver the ship while in orbit, was slated to be jettisoned before entry, but given the fear about the heat shield coming loose, they left the retro pack on, hoping that these fasteners would reduce the risk of the shield coming off. It turned out that the sensor was faulty and the shield was fine. Here is the capsule after it 
safely parachuted down and this is the exact location not far from the Dominican Republic where the capsule splashed down. Glenn was not the first American mammal in orbit, assuming animals have nationalities. NASA had previously flown a monkey named Enos around Earth's orbit three months earlier. However, the ship had complex instrument panels meant for human use. Here is a close-up of part of the panel. These controls are at least somewhat understandable. Roll, yaw, pitch to control the movement of the aircraft. Roll is turning the craft upside down and around along the longitudinal axis. Pitch is the nose moving up and down. Yaw is the nose running left to right. Glenn, in fact, had to use these instruments a point of pride for him that his human intervention was material to the success of the mission. Here is President Kennedy uh, inspecting the capsule along with John Glenn. After a long career as an Ohio senator, Glenn orbited the Earth once again in the space shuttle in 1998 when he was 77 years old, the oldest man ever in space. This concludes today's visit to another closed museum.